so here's the uh, second one you guys asked about. Um, and this one's actually, I did it two ways. One of them is probably the easy, not as right way, and the other one's the right way. Uh, so the first way I looked at this, <clears throat> um, so you have a cart given an initial speed, but we don't know what the initial speed is um, towards the motion detector. Uh, we don't know the angle. If we knew the angle, we could figure out what the acceleration was, but we don't know the angle. So uh, we don't know the acceleration. We don't know the angle. We're trying to figure out what the initial velocity was. And they give us this table that uh, we start out at zero. Um, and we end up at 2.5 meters after a second, and then we come back down. Uh, so the way I did this originally, and this is maybe a little bit of a shortcut, but not necessarily the right way to do it. Um, I looked at these first two sets of numbers, right? 0 to 0.5 and 0 to 1.9. And I just did a quick distance divided by time, right? And distance divided by time, um, if you take 1.9, the distance in the first half second divided by time, which was 0.5, right? So 3 or 1.9 divided by 0.5, you get 3.8. So what does that tell me? Um, because it's an average, it doesn't tell me the starting or the ending velocity, it gives me the average velocity in between these time intervals, right? So the average velocity from zero to half a second was 3.9. Now, if we look at these, which one comes closest to an average or to our average velocity, if I calculated the average velocity to be 3.9 between zero seconds and half a second, well, five is the closest. So the first time I did, I just guessed five because I said, well, 3.9 is the average in between these two time intervals. And that's probably pretty close. And I guess five. Um, so that was the way I did it first. And that works, but it doesn't work every time. Um, like if they had given us more options here, like say 4.5 was an option or uh, something like that, right? It, it might've been bad news for me. So I got a little bit lucky that they picked numbers that were kind of spread apart as far as the um, initials, initial velocities goes. So, um, I did it that way as a little shortcut. Um, not the most reliable way, but that's kind of the way I did it at first. The right way to do it is to look at this and say, okay, we got a symmetry here. We go from zero to 1.9 to 2.5 to 1.9 to zero, right? All in the same time interval. So we're looking at, um, if we graph this, this, is, this looks like a parabola. Um, and this 2.5, right? Because we've got some symmetry here, we know this 2.5 happens at the maximum height. Um, we know some other things about the maximum height. Uh, the velocity of an object when it reaches its maximum height is zero. Uh, so that's kind of interesting to know. So we know it goes, so the first two parts here don't really help us initially, but the fact that we know that it goes from its maximum height at one second back to the beginning at uh, two seconds, right? It takes one second to go from its maximum height back to the start. Uh, that we can do a little bit something with because we know if the initial velocity is zero, actually you guys use V naughts, I think, right? At the maximum height, uh, we know the distance was 2.5, was it 2.5? I just made that up, it was 2.5. All right, so the distance has to be 2.5. Hey, go away, we finished with you. Um, actually a negative 2.5 because it's going down the ramp now. So negative 2.5 meters, we know initial velocity, we know distance, we know time, right? It took a second. So we know three things we can solve for something. <clears throat> um, it, we could solve for final velocity and then use symmetry to say that the final velocity and the initial velocities are the same or we could solve for the acceleration and use the acceleration to calculate the initial velocity. So either one of those works, um, I think. Let's try, let's try and solve for the final velocity. So let's say we wanna know the final velocity here. So I know initial velocity, I know displacement, I know time, I wanna know the final velocity. Let's see, I can use delta x equals, and this one I don't think is on your equation sheet, v naught plus v over two times T. It's basically just average velocity times time equals the uh, 
displacement. So negative 2.5 equals uh, V naught plus VF. So just VF over two times one. Uh, and we multiply that across and we get negative five equals the final velocity. And because of symmetry, if it's negative five on the way down, it has to be positive five when it was going up. All right, so that's like a, if we had a parabola, the speed of the object going up at this point, right, V1 has to equal the speed of the object going down at this point, V2, right? They have to be the same. So if our cart is going up the ramp and coming back down, it has to have the same speed at the same spots uh, because of symmetry. Um, so if it's negative five on the way down, it had to be positive five on the way up. Um, so that's how I would do it probably. Or you could solve for the acceleration, um, which we would use, let's see, if we wanted to find A, delta x equals V not t plus one half a t squared, and we could solve for acceleration that way. So this goes to zero and cancels out. This is still negative 2.5, one half times a times one squared, um, and we get negative five. So the acceleration is negative five too. Uh, so the acceleration is negative five. And then once we know the acceleration, we could use uh, v, I equals V F plus A times T to figure out the final velocity. So a couple of different ways to do that one, uh, whatever is your preference. So there's number seven.